have a very special guest today, um, uh, a fellow high school Suitland alumni, uh, Stephanie Martin. Um, how's everything going today, Stephanie? Stephanie? Um, today I'm good. Today I was excited about this podcast interview because I've never done a podcast interview before. Um, so yeah, today I'm good. Wonderful, wonderful. Um, just want to take the time to uh, thank you uh, for joining us and um, just basically show my appreciation for your growth as an artist and an actor, man. And um, I just wanted to thank you. So um, what's, what's your, uh, what inspired you for performing? Um, what inspired me to perform? Um, I always just think back to Suitland, to be honest, because I don't think that I had even ever seen a play mm. um, other than like, you know, DMV, like church plays. Every church does like a play for like Christmas, something like that. But like, I, I had never really seen like a play for real um, before I auditioned for Suitland and was like in my own first, like, myself in a play mm -hmm. um but i think i was just inspired by circumstance really um i wasn't really into going to like my neighborhood school i wanted to shake things up and do something different um at the time i was really outgoing and just like to explore and be kind of creative and kind of weird and um i just felt like oh, i go to my neighborhood school see the same people do the same thing that i've been doing Mm -hmm. um, like middle school and all of that so Suitland was an option I was like auditioning for the theater program just seemed like the easiest thing to do because mm -hmm. um, it's just me and I just remember some words and I just express them and so I wound up getting in so it was really a circumstantial thing <laughs> unless you believe in fate mm -hmm. um, that's really what springboarded it so um you didn't really have any like dreams or aspirations to be an actor as a like a, a, a kid? I truly didn't. Like truly, when I was a kid, um, I really liked to read. I read everything. Mm -hmm. um, and my mom would um, buy books for us, you know, just like on her way from work, like back in the day, like you go to the library and get like a 50 cent use book or something like that mm. and I tore through everything I read everything so I thought I wanted to be as a child I thought I had wanted to be um a child author mm. and illustrator because I also love to draw um I'll still like draw and paint more so for like just kind of therapeutic reasons I'm, I'm not going to say that I'm amazing at all <laughs> but um I was really more so into that kind of stuff so I don't know. I never was like, I wasn't like a huge movie buff or watched a lot of TV shows or anything like that. I really was just like, what can I do? And like I said, I feel like at the time in middle school, like I was young, I was feeling myself. I had got my hair pressed. I got contact. So <laughs> I was just like, I could act, you know what I mean? So I think it was just like, the right time of entering high school and Suitland being an option and my kind of like young preteen bravado at the time mm -hmm. just led it to me and then once I was there and I started getting into the craft of acting and watching things and seeing plays and studying even outside of Suitland at the studio theater in DC that's when it really was like okay this can be a career and I'm really in love with this art form um, from what I remember, um, in Suitland, uh, ninth grade year, <clears throat> when we did uh, monologues in class, um, it seemed like you were a natural, like you just knew how to process a character and uh, put your own spin on it. And another thing is that your work ethic was, was like really, really crazy, you know? And yeah. I think... Um, it kind of influenced me to uh, put my all into certain monologues and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. That's really like interesting to hear 
you know, like 15 plus or whatever years later. Mm. Now as my interaction, a relationship with acting and the craft is more on a professional side. And it's like, oh, I've had different experiences. Um, It's really interesting to hear, you know, from an outside perspective, someone's experience of me before I've had all these experiences, like what that little kernel was. It's really interesting to hear. I think that I, well, one, I'm a Capricorn. We were just talking about astrology stuff a little bit before we started. Yeah. Um, and, or my sun sign is in Capricorn and Capricorns are really, we get a bad rap because people just, the interpretation is usually like Capricorns are these like cold, emotionless, power hungry, just like CEO ambitious types. Mm-hmm. And part of maybe my work ethic might have to do with some of that um, intensity in terms of my essence. You know, I don't, I don't super relate to all the like cold hearted whatever stuff, but that's just me. Um, but I think part of that work ethic is my essence. I can definitely have a tunnel vision on whatever it is that I'm doing. And I think that also acting and getting into a character is so creative, creative to me and is so interesting to me um, that I think I just felt a kind of freedom in throwing myself into it, I guess. Mm. I don't know. That's interesting, though. Yeah, it was definitely seem um, extremely calculated <laughs> just watching the process, you know. <laughs> um, if you remember, uh, when did you first perform? Again, I think that my first like performance was my audition for Suitland. If you don't count um, me rehearsing that same monologue for like my family the Sunday before. Mm-hmm. Um, because my family um, back home will always have like Sunday dinners like after church so everyone it's a it's a weekly time where everyone's going to be together and so I remember I had practice with one of my cousins an older cousin mm-hmm. who is also creative and he's more so into like singing and stuff but we were kind of like two peas in the pot because again I don't know what it was but at this time I was so just like um I had a certain kind of bravado that, you know, only like kids can have. So mm-hmm. we were like always like, oh, we'll perform like outgoing in a way. And so I worked on it with him and it was a monologue from For Color Girls, mm-hmm. um, Lady in Blue. And then I like went out into the family room or whatever where all my family was. It was like, this is my audition piece that I'm going to do on like Wednesday. I want to rehearse it for y'all. So I performed it. And then I performed it for the audition. But that was really my first time performing. So that's what I'm saying. When I say Suitland was really the groundwork for everything, it was really the groundwork for everything. Because I had not done anything, any type of like acting or anything like this before. Mm -hmm. Was it, uh, for me personally, it was, I was extremely nervous during the (laughs) the audition process. I think the monologue I did was uh, one of Shakespeare's um, when um, Brutus killed Caesar. I couldn't recite it right now, but um, I was extremely nervous, um, but it felt kind of freeing. Was it freeing in a sense? Like, I guess the, 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 the built up anticipation of I'm about to go to this new school. I have to prepare. I have to uh, Mm -hmm. say this monologue. Was it, um, did you feel nervous and was it freeing after you finished? Mm -hmm. First of all, that's intense. You went straight to Shakespeare? Straight to Shakespeare. (laughs) (laughs) I was like, I I didn't really know anything. I just, I literally probably at at the time when, you know, people actually went to bookstores, I was in Barnes and Noble all the time. Mm -hmm. So, um, I just like literally went to Barnes and Noble and like went to like the monologue, the the theater section and Mm -hmm. like literally got like a monologue book or something and I just picked something. Mm -hmm. Um, That's intense. Kudos to you. Thank you. Thank Um, you. I do think that I was nervous. I'm pretty sure I was nervous because again, I've never done anything like this before. And also, you know, it's also kind of like the beauty of 
like childhood innocence. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like you take things specifically and seriously because you're not jaded by anything yet. Mm -hmm. So I was like, I don't know who else, because it's an audition. It's like, I can get denied. (laughs) You know what I mean? I didn't know what the competition would be like. I didn't know how many slots were available, Mm -hmm. you know, or, or whatever. I'm just thinking this is an audition. I could not get it. Um, So let me put my best foot forward. But I'm pretty sure I was nervous. Um, But I think, I don't know, there was something about the stage and performing where I felt kind of comfortable. I felt comfortable with attention on me. And I felt comfortable with attention on me also because I was prepared. I like studied really hard on it. I had gone over with my cousin. I performed it for my family. So I felt like I could do this. Mm-hmm. And also, you don't know that you're bad yet. <laughs> also, yeah. like, I think when you're kind of trying something for the first time, like, you don't know if you're amazing or if you're terrible. You just kind of go for it. Um, I remember, though, that I think it wasn't too many people there. I think it was just like Mr. Summers, which was one of our... Um, ninth grade instructors and Mm -hmm. then like I think it was actually Antonio because I think you oh that's right you wait in the green room Mm -hmm. I think I'm at Liasha and then they call you out and then like they take a picture so the fact that it was also probably wasn't like a million people in the audience is based like Mr. Summers and one other person Mm -hmm. probably helps me a little bit but I do think it was freeing because it's something that you like kind of worked really hard on got to show and put your best foot for it so yeah i think i was both nervous and free nice nice so uh what's challenging about bringing a script to life Hmm. i think it depends on the script like you were saying how you dig shakespeare i think for shakespeare it can be the kind of like tediousness of the language Mm -hmm. Um, especially because everyone has different methods and techniques for breaking down Shakespeare, performing Shakespeare. Um, So that's like one thing, for example, I really think it depends on the style. Um, But then like outside of style, say like, oh, I've got the style down packed. I think then it depends on the character. Mm -hmm. I think there are some characters that feel closer to you. Um, than others and so it's like to access what you may need to access for a particular character may not come as naturally Mm -hmm. um and then i think uh something that can be difficult um especially if you're doing kind of like film and television and it's more like auditioning than auditioning is that you know, some of these scripts are not in their final form. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Um, So there's some more rewrites that need to happen. So sometimes you're kind of working with something that's not quite finished yet or not quite uh, there yet and what you're literally seeing in the script on the page. You know, because sometimes you'll be reading stuff and you're like, this is, why why am I saying this right here? Or why, you know what I mean? So, but those are the words written down. That's the character. Again, especially if you're going for an audition, I think in rehearsal or once you have the role, there's more freedom. But if you're trying to present just what they have in the script, working with challenging writing that may not feel naturalistic can be a challenge for sure. With uh, auditioning, I guess, for a TV series, um, is it difficult to bring a script to life when the character doesn't have a backstory? Do you have to, like, create a backstory for that character in order to put your all into it, the audition? Yeah, well, I mean, you know, for auditions, there's there's usually some type of breakdown, right? There's Mm -hmm. usually something that's, like, you know, witty, young college student, blah, 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 blah. Um, And sometimes the breakdown gives you really good information. So you can kind of work from there. And then other times the breakdown, again, a lot of times with auditions, even the breakdown could be a work in progress. Mm. So the breakdown will say one thing and then you do it in the room or a tape. And then you get back um, feedback that's like giving you more of the character. And you're like, oh, well, that's not really what I would have interpreted from the breakdown. 
But anyways, so there's usually some kind of breakdown or something. And then you can usually glean a lot if you get the script, which you could get the whole script and read the script. Um, and if you don't get the script, you can usually glean a lot from the scenes. Um, again, I think it depends on the writing and the style. There have been, some, like for auditioning, for example, some like sides where I totally get the character because the writing is so good and because I, it's, it's an instinctual thing. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like when you, like imagine a script, like you meeting someone for the first time, like an actual person you're meeting. And you know, you meet people, sometimes you just get people yeah. and just met them. And it's like, I, I, I understand this, we vibe. So sometimes it's like that with the script. Like you're reading the character, you're like, I get it, I feel it. And then um, sometimes like you're saying, it can be challenging because of the writing, because maybe you didn't get a good breakdown or because maybe you didn't get the script or maybe it's a concept that's just like out of the norm. Mm. And I think that can go both ways. It can be exciting because yeah, then you can create your own world. Um, and then in another way, it's like, I have no idea what's going on right now. Mm -hmm. um, so it all just depends. It all depends. Um, I'm pretty sure um, during the audition process, you might get uh, a few no's here and there. How do you stay um, motivated during that process? More I than a few. It's like 99% no. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's a thing. Well, I don't know, but it seems like that can be sometimes a thing that people don't realize. People either on the outside of the business, like family members or something like that. Mm -hmm. And also maybe people who are aspiring or in it or just starting out or whatever in school and hoping to be at a place where like, yeah, I'm auditioning. <clears throat> don't realize is that there's so much rejection. There's so much rejection even when you're you go through certain rounds and it's like between you and two people mm -hmm. two and three people and you've auditioned 15 times and you met the producers and you you met the director and you signed a contract and you still don't get it that can wow. happen wow that happens to me and you know those aren't things that are like publicized or you talk about you know, other than maybe with your other actor friends, like, yo, this is crazy. But I think those are things that, you know, from an outside person looking in doesn't realize. It's like, most of the time I'm rejected. Most of the time it's a no. You know what I mean? Um, and then, like I said, even when it's like a yes, in terms of, you're amazing. You're so good. You're nailing this character. Or we like your whatever. And you still don't actually book it. The, that is still a no. <laughs> yeah. It's like a yes and a no at the same time. It's like, great, I'm fantastic. I'm talented, I'm fantastic, but I still, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So um, staying motivated, that's, that's a work in progress. And I think that that's an evolution. I think for me, it's always about checking in with my why, like why I'm doing anything. You know, and then I think it's always, and this may seem counterintuitive to people in terms of motivation, but it's always about looking at um, where I am empowered and where I can empower myself mm -hmm. in terms of um, improvement and getting better. Sometimes for me, when I can see where I can improve, that's motivation because it's like, you know, it's like the Einstein thing. It's like doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. Like what? Mm -hmm. um, so for me, sometimes, even in my lowest point of rejection or in my feelings about something, if I can kind of come out of that and look at it um, from a non-emotional place and an objective place, and I can see, okay, this is where I can make some improvements or adjustments mm -hmm. that motivates me because I'm like okay this this isn't like the end of this journey or the end of this story this isn't the end of this um like you're working on a piece like a visual like a painting or something you can see like oh, okay cool cool we can keep going because I'm 
uh, I'm seeing where I can um, do things a little differently. I think um, but there are so many things that can motivate, but yeah. Yeah, I think um, sometimes I wouldn't say failure, but sometimes mishaps are important. Just like you said, you can learn from them, you can evolve from them, you can grow from them, and um, it builds character. You know, it builds a lot of character. Um, what makes a good scene partner? Um, I think a lot of things. I think what makes a good scene partner is someone who respects your process, um, someone who's patient, someone who doesn't take like acting so seriously or take like the moment so seriously, someone who knows how to breathe um, and someone who um, doesn't allow themselves to get stuck. So like loose, a loose scene partner, someone who knows their lines, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> yeah, like basic as that um, can make a really big difference. Um, someone who's willing to be vulnerable um, and who's a professional so that there's not, um, there's not a blurred line between, you know, professionalism and vulnerability and like, this is our job and this is what we're doing right here. And um, having that line of professionalism in real life, someone who kind of understands that um, and <clears throat> has control of that within themselves. But just like an open professional person mm, okay okay um could you describe your acting style hmm could I describe <laughs> I don't know I'm really I'm, I'm more curious and I think it will be a more uh accurate answer probably to ask people who's watched me act but I think I would say I think I would say for myself just kind of like realistic and naturalistic that's kind mm. of like favorite acting style I think to watch and I think that's my favorite acting style to kind of aspire to so I think I kind of fall into um how can I make the words on the page feel like they're words that I would actually be saying mm. that's kind of my always my point of entry because always my point of entry for a character is also like how is this person like me even if i'm playing someone who's completely like quote unquote unlike me so i think i would say just naturalistic i guess realistic style so no method acting no uh <laughs> changing your whole lifestyle to bring a, a character to life right no i don't do that the interesting thing is my personality type is very prone to do some shit like that mm -hmm. um because as you were saying, even I guess at 14, I was intense as hell. Um, <laughs> and I still can get to be that intense. So I kind of try to stay away from that stuff because um, my personality type is very prone to kind of do that. Mm. Um, I think what helps is having um, a life partner who's just as intense, but in a different way mm. um, to kind of balance that out and keep me from going overboard but for me it's about research um like physical research like i will do something like go to a place um to feel what it's like like doing mm. the get down for example like just take the train and go to the bronx mm. you know it's like be up there to feel that energy but i wouldn't call that like method acting but i will do some visceral physical um things um and then obviously like research and then my own research inside of my own emotional self but no i'm not i'm not like yeah no I'm not going <laughs> no problem um once i guess you become of age and you've had the best acting career uh imaginable um if someone would make a movie would make your life into a movie who would you who would who would you want to play you um 
don't know. <laughs> oh, you know, it's funny. I'm going to cheat a little bit because I just did um, a show where I my character picks up a, a younger actress, like a younger actress started the role and then I picked up as she got older. Mm -hmm. um, and the actress was Cameron Jones. I hope I'm having her last name right. I think so. Um, we follow each other on Instagram, but um, <laughs> she was playing the the younger version of the character, and I was hired after the fact. And then when I like got to set and was talking to people, they were like, "Oh my gosh, have you met Carrie? Have you met?" And um, it was just like this thing of like, "Oh yeah, I have the same energy, blah blah." blah. So I'm gonna cheat and say her because she's already been kind of low key like cast as like baby me. Mm. Um, I really don't know for the rest. I really feel like rather than like a um, actress that is like super known, I feel like an actress who is actually like not super well known, very new, very raw, I think would probably be the best. Because I really think about if there was a movie about me, it being more like high school-ish kind of like years, to be honest. Um, yeah, who could kind of like embody that raw energy that I feel like I had at that time. Yeah, and I'm pretty sure that you uh, have a a very long career ahead of you. So it's probably hard to distinguish uh, who can play you right now. Yeah, I'm like still in it. So I'm like, uh, <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Um, who do you look up to as an actor, director, anybody? Uh, yeah. A bunch of people um i look up to so many people i mean the first name that comes to my brain is viola davis mm -hmm. and i look up to her um obviously not just as an actress but everything she says and her whole perspective i feel like for me is one of the first times where i it really resonates with me, the things that she says in her perspective, because she's so much about um, craft and she's so much about keeping it real and kind of not falling. It's like, even though she has so much success, mm -hmm. she's not just playing the Hollywood game of like, oh, I'm successful, so everything is great. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. She's not coming off to me at least as bitter in any way, but she keeps it real. Um, there's some other people too, like in terms of like actors, directors and stuff, I look up to Julie Dash, Dee Rees, uh, Michaela Cole, Britt Marling. Um, and then even outside of that space, like AOC is like my girl, I have a huge crush on her mm -hmm. and fellow Capricorn, Michelle Obama, because <laughs> these women are just, they're incredible. Yeah. And I like um, the way that uh, Viola Davis is pushing um, equality um, within the Hollywood field. Uh, I think she came out with a article or something that I read that she was compared to uh, Meryl Streep, but she wasn't getting Meryl Streep money. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right, right. Yeah. Even so. like those kind of opportunities and those kind of chances. So much of the lack of equality, I think, is so nuanced mm -hmm. and so generational that you need people to just continue to to say this stuff and call this stuff out. Um, speaking of equality, um, well, have you noticed any like um, shift in Hollywood dealing with um, just black representation? I know the last couple of years, um, black representation has been very prevalent, um, I guess ever since the Black Panther movie uh, that Disney uh, produced, have you noticed any like change in that? Well, in the business, there are so many different sectors. Mm. You know what I mean? There's like, in each sector, I think has their own culture in a way. And each of those subcultures make up the culture of Hollywood and the culture of the entertainment business. Mm. Um, I think like any kind of like 
generalized culture. So, you know, there's casting directors, then there's, you know, the crew, then there's actors, and there's producers, then there's the writers. So I think each of those subcultures probably have their own answer or response to that. Mm. Um, I think I think just a really big shift that I think probably a lot of people are seeing and feeling is um, content, is mm. the actual content. Um, I think something that, again, kind of serendipitous came at the right time is that now more than ever, there's more actual entertainment content and outlet for that content, outlets for that content than like ever before Mm -hmm. so the sheer um number of outlets for content going up you're going to see um a certain kind of representation or inclusion going up just sheer numbers Mm -hmm. so content has been a big thing um and i don't know if it's just that people were quieter about it before and this might very well be the case, but it seems like there are more um, Black people wanting to, or at least publicly saying, um, I am pursuing a career in the entertainment business. Mm-hmm. I, I feel like I see that so much more than I feel like before in terms of like, younger people or people in high school or in college, I don't know, or maybe it's just the internet, I'm seeing more people. Mm -hmm. Um, But I think content has been the biggest shift. And obviously here or there, you'll see like, oh, they put a black person in this role, Mm -hmm. Um, which has been kind of interesting. It would be great to see more of that shift in terms of casting directors, um, to be honest, and producers and writers. Mm -hmm. Um, It would be nice to essentially see more of that shift happening, I guess, quote unquote, behind the camera, Um, because I think that those shifts will make the biggest impact, to be honest. And things are changing drastically with like the technology we're receiving now, like um, you can buy a very nice camera, you know, uh, an expense, an expensively it's not hard to uh, go on YouTube and figure out how to write a script or how to structure a script. And, um, you know, um, a lot of people that I've come across have a lot of sense of community within their groups, whether it be actors, painters and whatnot. And um, just get your content out. Uh, Issa Rae started on YouTube, you know, producing her own stuff. So (laughs) maybe um, in the near future, we'll get more content um, from creators. Um, Out of all the roles you've played in the past, which is your favorite? (laughs) It's like going through so much stuff. Um, I think I will say I'll give an answer for a favorite role from a play and a favorite role from a film. Sure. So, um, I think one of my favorite roles from a play has to be, um, I played this character named Mary in a play called Sweet Maladies um, at Brava Theater in San Francisco. Mm. It must have been, I forgot if I was in school and doing the play or if it was like in between, like during the summer or something like that, I don't remember. Um, but the experience was awesome because it was all women and uh, a woman playwright and a small cast. And actually one of my instructors in grad school was also in the play. So I got to um, act alongside one of my instructors, Lisa Porter. So that was super fun. But um, my character was this young girl. There were like three sisters. I was the youngest sister. And um, I got to do this really long, kind of really eerie monologue Mm. um, that I just love stuff like that. I love 
getting into that intense thing and again just being on stage and creating something out of nothing you know Mm -hmm. um and it was a character that was younger than me so I got to really chameleon and transform into a different space so that was awesome and then for film I would say uh this character Violet who I played in the uh indie film Skin in the Game Mm -hmm. um another pretty intense experience um this young woman Violet uh is she is a sex worker but it's in this kind of um she's manipulated into it Mm -hmm. um it's really not her choice she's in a space where her pimp in her mind is also her boyfriend and they're in a um real relationship although he's using her that was a really again really fantastic experience because the indie so it's kind of like uh a more intimate kind of like cat Mm. crew feeling and um i met some incredible artists through that journey and the woman who's that film was based off of um she's jayla the self-esteem queen on instagram uh she was so open and willing and upfront with us about telling us how it really is in that world because she was in that world and experienced all of that Mm. and um that that i feel like i just when i when i rewatch that film and see that character it's just like one i really you feel her so so did I'm assuming that you spent uh, a lot of time with her. Did she give you any tips on how to portray that character? Well, she, so I had just like finished or was finishing up or something like that with the get down. Basically I was coming into, coming to actually move to LA. I had always wanted to come back to move to LA, but the get down was filming in New York. So I had been there. So I was finally like, okay, I'm, coming back and like the day that I flew in there was this like two plus hour conference meeting uh unload with her and myself and some of the other girls and the director Mm. um and she just went through her experiences she went through what it's really like she went through the different types of pimps and how they manipulate Mm. the girls um she ran through certain like signs how you can tell if someone is you know quote unquote working or not and for a lot of this stuff if you don't really know from someone who's been in it you really wouldn't be able to tell a lot of the times people have this image in their head of what like a, a sex worker or you know a person in the life as they say Mm. even look like so that was intense and then she gave us her her phone number and was like call me (laughs) if you want to talk more and I just took like a day to just take all that in and then I definitely called her after that was like okay so like you said about me before like getting into the more specifics like okay so if the girl's doing this like is she allowed to have her cell phone? Like getting into the more specific details mm-hmm. of what that is. But then, you know, I also kind of drove around the areas where she was saying things go down and just kind of picking up on body language. But she was definitely integral to starting to create that character for sure. Mm, that's extremely heavy. Um, have you progressed in your acting career as you have expected? Not at all. Not at all. I don't know. Does anyone, I don't know. Maybe there are some people who had a plan. Well, I feel like there are some people who had a plan and they like went right to that space. Um, I think all of it has been really unexpected. Like I said, even from high school, I don't know if I expected going into Suitland as a theater major, expecting it to be a career and expecting it to be a career in this way. And then I think I never planned to go to graduate school, especially not California. Mm. Um, 
that just kind of happened. I didn't expect to um, essentially kind of like book a role on, at the time, the budding Netflix mm. um, platform at all. And then on the flip side of that, I think from that experience of like doing the get down <clears throat> and Netflix, my, I was expecting more of like a um, a certain type of momentum. Like I thought like, oh, maybe people will see me on this show and then want to hire me for more stuff or whatever. Mm. And although that has been true to some degree, like people have seen me and they're like, oh yeah, like in terms of directors and stuff like that, it didn't happen in like this big way. I didn't go from... Um, doing this show on Netflix to like, oh, now I'm doing a show on NBC or something like that. Mm -hmm. So I've experienced really like it not going the way I thought um, in maybe a positive way and then maybe the other side. Um, so I'm really just here for the ride. <laughs> mm. It seems like they all say um, the saying, uh, everything happens for a reason. And it seems like that's your life path. I wouldn't say that's is, is, is predestined for you, but it seems like, like you said, you're going with the flow and everything, the chips are falling where they may, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And um, just a quick side note, man, the, the amount of excitement I had when I seen you on uh, the Get Down on Netflix. That's so funny. Uh, man, it was crazy. I said, oh, that's my friend. I went to school with her. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. And told all my friends about it and everything, man. It was it was amazing. Um, when you suffer a setback, how does that emotionally affect you and your work? Um, I think it depends on the setback. Um, there can be self-inflicted setbacks, and then there can be environmental setbacks, I think. Um, and I think for me, the thing that I try to focus on is how best can I nurture myself through this experience? So it's like emotions come with a setback, mm -hmm. right? But my experience of emotions is that I am not my emotion. Mm. You know, I am not, uh, like I myself am not anger. I am not like the vibration of anger. I'm experiencing anger right now or whatever the case may be. So I kind of take that approach. Um, but at the same time, allow myself to fully experience the emotion because I think that emotions are information. Mm -hmm. um, even the really dark, shadowy, deep, intense emotions are information. Um, it's kind of like this deep sea diving. Travis been super into like looking at deep sea divers. Um, but it's like, if you can really keep yourself calm enough on that breath to go down that deep to where you can't even see the sunlight from the top of the ocean, you are going to see some interesting shit down there. Mm. Um, but it does take a certain kind of uh, peace and, aware and internal awareness to be able to go down that deep and not be, and not die, you know? Mm. So my focus is normally on that because I also don't see setbacks um, in kind of like just this superficial sense, you know? So a, set, a setback could be like, um, I wanted to go further in something in a project for an audition and say I got a call back, but then I didn't wind up getting it. I guess someone might be, call that like a setback, so to speak. Mm -hmm. um, I always feel like something that happens, there's a larger something to it than just that literal thing, mm -hmm. you know? And then sometimes it's a literal thing. Like I said, um, there's environmental setbacks and those I think you just have to kind of like 
brush off your back and move on because there are some things that are literally just have to do with um things that you can't change so yeah it's, it's definitely hard to um assess the situation if you keep your emotions bottled in you yeah know, it's, it's just like shaking a, a a soda or whatever if you keep shaking and keep shaking once you open that top everything just explodes everywhere Mm -hmm. um how do you motivate your fellow castmates <laughs> um yeah again i think the best answer will probably come from castmates i've had in the past i don't know i don't know do i motion do i motivate my castmates um uh i mean from what i remember um you had from suitland you had a very light personality um Okay, yeah, silly, maybe. silly at sometimes, you know, told a joker here and there. And it just, it just kept everyone, you know, I guess, enthused about whatever project that we were working on. Yeah, yeah. I was kind of crazy. I was kind of wild. I was kind of out there. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, I think sometimes you can do things that you don't even realize are motivating, but do motivate. Mm. Um, I think like, yeah, I think what I try to do to motivate the people around me or who I'm working with is to respect their process. Mm. And I feel like, because when, when you feel respect from someone in a genuine way, not in like condescending way, but true respect from someone, I feel like that empowers and emboldens you and you feel freer to, to explore, to try to do what it is you're trying to do. So I definitely try to respect everyone's process, even if it's completely different from my own. And I think I also just try to come in, like you're saying, um, with a open and just loving um, energy. Mm -hmm. I, I just, I, and, and there are just so many, I mean, it's it's everywhere in every industry, but especially I feel like in, entertainment especially like film and television like people can be nasty people can just have just this jaded negative energy and it's all just insecurity so for me i i don't um i don't take it personally because once you kind of like interact with that person or those people a certain kind of way they drop that and then it's all good and it's all cool you know what i mean so i just try to keep it keep keep it all all love and peace and i'm sure that uh a lot of that comes from the competitive nature of the business right i think it comes from a lot of stuff mm -hmm. i think it comes from the competitive nature of the business i think it comes from it's very true um i think especially in la you people will be friends with you or try to cozy up to you mm -hmm either because they think they can get something or because you're like famous or because you're the star of whatever it is you're doing or whatever so i get some people's kind of um wall that they put up mm. at first because you don't know mm. and that's what i'm saying like once you kind of are just like cool and for most people once they kind of vibe and feel like oh you're cool the wall comes down it's like oh, okay um but I think, you know, sometimes for people, it's, they've had a shitty time. Mm. <laughs> they haven't been, I mean, you could get disrespected, especially as an actor, I think, in so many, from all kinds of different angles. And imagine just like going through that for years and years and years and years and years, mm. <laughs> you know? So even the people who you may think like, oh, you're at a certain type of spot or, I would love to be doing what you're doing or whatever their perspective of where they are may be completely different because of what they had to endure along the way mm -hmm. so i don't judge people for being for for any of that because it logically makes sense mm -hmm. to develop a certain kind of attitude or energy or mental perspective going through this like entertainment business journey for sure it's like an armor in a sense yeah mm. um what's the biggest audience you have performed in front of oh that has to be 
probably in grad school. That has to be, yeah, I'm pretty sure. Um, uh, the graduate school I went to, American Conservatory Theater in San Francisco, is attached to a regional theater. Mm. Um, and uh, the American Conservatory Theater. And um, yeah, that's like a lower A theater, I believe. It has, I think, like a little over a thousand seats in there, but it's it's gorgeous. It's this, you know, old school when you think about like properly going to the theater <laughs> or like dressing up with the velvet seats and the crown molding and the three different balconies. It's really a beautiful space. Um, but like as students, we uh, you do at least one show on, on that main, and we call it the main stage there. Um, you could do more, it just depends on what you're casting. But um, we all usually will do a Christmas carol. And so I was in that. I played various different roles, but the main role I played was Belle, mm -hmm. um, who's like Scrooge's um, girlfriend or whoever. But then you all know the story of Christmas carol. But that was, and, and those, like, people love Christmas stuff. So, mm -hmm. so the, those houses would be packed out. Um. I'm pretty sure you get nervous uh, before every show, but what did you become even more nervous? Uh, the more more nervous because you saw more people, or is it the same as a smaller audience? No, I don't think I was more nervous because it was more people. Um, again, because I feel really comfortable. I feel really comfortable on stage when it comes to performing and when it comes to like a bunch of people because I see it as just like this big time for everyone to like be together and have a good time mm. and to, like experience something and I also see myself as just kind of like this vehicle or vessel for the spirit of that character to come through so if anything I'm just really really excited um especially for like a show like that, where there were kids in the show, like I have kids, like it's, 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 it's fun. Um, I think if possibly I was doing a different role, like if I was doing some intense Shakespeare, mm. shit, then I might be more, and, and that nervousness has more to do with like, you know, are people gonna think I'm good? Are people gonna think like, oh, that was awful? Is and I think for those iconic roles, I think I would be more nervous than like a new play or something like that because people have things in their head and in their mind for how they imagine certain roles to be played. Okay, okay. Um, what's your perfect Sunday afternoon look like? Hmm. I think in general, <laughs> just like anything that is looking like rest anything <laughs> like like true just resting um i also just recently started a weekly uh virtual meditation circle nice um, with like myself and a couple of uh friends that i facilitate so also kind of like getting prepared or whatever for that in the evening um but anything that's restful man i mean like laying around watching some chill TV, like HDTV is my whole <laughs> Anything that's about really like true restfulness. Um, is it hard to, um, I guess, get out of a character? Does some of, mm. does, yeah, does, is it hard to like leave that energy behind once everything is done? I think sometimes <clears throat> for the more intense characters, and for me, it's less leaving behind, like, inside of my own body, mm. at least from the characters I've played so far. This could change in the future. But more so hard to leave behind in terms of just, like, thinking about that person, that character, that person, um, empathizing with them. Um, but I think that's okay because I think that that's kind of the, that that's kind of the 
blessing of being able to be an artist is kind of like whatever you're working on, whatever project, and if you're an actor, like whatever character, you can learn something. Mm -hmm. So I think it's okay for it not to go to go away immediately. Um, because that energy and that spirit has become a part of you for a, a little while. But in terms of something like really intense, like, oh, I can't let go of this thing at night, like keeping me up at night. Mm -hmm. I haven't had a, I haven't had a character like that so far. Uh, would you like to, uh, I guess, pursue a character like that if the opportunity came to you? Something intense, yeah. Mm -hmm. I like intense stuff. Um, I'm into intensity, um, but it would definitely have to be, it would definitely have to be the right time. I would definitely have to be ready and have the right um, support in my real life to um, to be able to hold that kind of energy but I do I, I do think and I do I am grateful for the many years of training that I've had because um training is one big support that you have to work through that and be able to take on something really intense and not let it mess you up mm. um when you have a five minute break during rehearsal uh, what do you spend that time doing? Mm, probably going to pee. Probably <laughs> to stretch. Um, that's normally what needs to happen. Pee, probably stretch it out, um, kind of to what you're saying, like physically get some balance in my body between um, a character, if I've been up working, and myself, and kind of come back to my body. Um, and... Yeah, that's probably about it. Only five minutes. <laughs> nice. Um, is there anyone you would love to uh, collaborate with? Yeah. I mean, there are so many incredible artists, um, known and unknown, mm -hmm. um, who I feel like I'd love to collaborate with. But um, in terms of like being in someone's film or someone's project, um, D. Reeves, as I said before, Britt Marling, as I said before, Terrence Nance, I love, and um, Philip Humans, the new, um, the super young director. Um, I saw Burning Cane um, here in LA at Array, and it's just gorgeous and beautiful. Mm. And then um, collaborate with you, Phil. Hey. <laughs> that needs to happen. Um, and then... There are so many fantastic actors who I think it'd be amazing to act alongside. Um, but someone that comes to mind just now is Nicole Bahari because I have always loved her. And again, like you're saying, acting style, she's someone who I would love to come off how she comes off like in her acting. And I just feel like I would learn so much acting alongside her. I, I've, I've been on her since Sleepy Hollow. I'm obsessed with her. Yeah, Sleepy Hollow was definitely my uh, favorite uh, dose of like just leaving reality and, you know, yeah. yeah. Um, if you had a magic wand, uh, what show would you do next? Hmm. I think I would love to do something that is groundbreaking for like television. I feel like a lot of that has been happening and continues to happen. So like for me, something like Atlanta was really groundbreaking. Something mm -hmm. like um, Dave, Lil Dicky show was really groundbreaking. Mm -hmm. Just something really groundbreaking and cool and interesting and something that resonates with people aka something people actually see and watch because <laughs> mm -hmm. there are like so many shows where i mean it has some type of audience but it's like it's so niche you know yeah. uh so something like that i love the anthologies i would love to do that like american crime i love an american horror story mm -hmm. um something where it's like different every season where i can switch my own thing up Mm -hmm. uh, 
Yeah, stuff like that. Stuff like that. Um, me personally, I would love to see you in a, uh, a type of show like uh, maybe Parks and Recreation, you know, just to bring your co comedic side. Yeah. People tell me that. And it's so funny to me because one, I don't think, okay, one side, I think I'm hilarious. Yeah. Another side, I don't really think I'm that funny. Mm. Um, so it's kind of weird. Maybe what it is is, yeah, I, I, I don't know. I don't even know. But people tell me that they're like you would love that show or blah blah, blah. And i'm like what about me do people get that from I maybe i think i think it's your timing you know it's timing the way you I'm patient go yeah that would be fun i definitely don't imagine or would think like oh the next thing is be a certain kind of like comedic thing mm -hmm. um but hey you never know yeah, that can be a, you know, just a muscle that you can exercise here and there. Um, do you have any advice for up and coming actors? Hmm. I think my advice will be based on how up and coming and then like the person, you mm -hmm. know, because, you know, I don't assume that everyone is in the same place mentally or emotionally. And I don't assume everyone is in the same place in terms of where it is they want to go. There are some people who aspire to win an Oscar. There are other people who aspire to just have their own theater company. Mm -hmm. There are other people who aspire to be in commercials. Um, so it would really depend. But I think if I were to give something um, just generalized, it would be... Uh, Hold on. Wait, wait, wait. Advice for a young 15-year-old Stephen A in Sula High School. Oh, Mm, okay. Yeah. Okay. Advice would be to myself, Susan. Advice. Um. Don't take yourself too seriously. Mm. Um. Trust in your talent. And just continue continue to do a lot of the stuff you're doing in terms of your passion mm -hmm. you know it's passion that drove me to um focus so hard and to read so many plays and to seek training outside of Suitland and to just take this even further mm -hmm. so that's what I would say that's perfect um that's all the questions I have for you today. Um, I just want to say that, again, thank you for joining us. Uh, I'm so impressed of your of your progress, and and I'm absolutely sure that you're going to take this career far. Um, and and just thank you, man. And hopefully, um, once you're back on the East Coast, we can uh, set up a, a a portrait session or something. Definitely, definitely. The thing is, I'm always there, like basically for Christmas <laughs> mm -hmm. and it's always like okay it's Christmas and I'm like there for a week so it's crazy during that time but yeah I'll still hit you up because you never know you never know um all right I guess we're going to end it here um just want to stop recording would you like to see little man before you leave yes that would be so great <laughs> no problem. Give me one second.